Keturah was one of Abraham's wives. She is a woman of virtue and for that she was worthy of being joined to that righteous one, Abraham. The Torah mentions this marriage in Genesis 25 verse 1, after the death of Sarah and subsequent to the wedding of Isaac and Rebekah. The rabbis present this as a lesson in proper conduct. If a man's wife dies, and he has grown children, he should first see that they are married before himself taking a new wife. The Identification of Keturah According to one view, Abraham remarried after the death of Sarah and had a total of three wives, Sarah, Hagar, and Keturah. Another tradition identifies Keturah with Hagar, and thus Abraham married only twice. Each of these views finds scriptural support for its position. The three-wife opinion relies on Genesis 25 verse 1, Abraham took another wife, implying a third wife in addition to the first two. This school of thought is further bolstered by the fact that this wife also had a different name, Keturah. In addition, the plural wording of Genesis 25 verse 6, to Abraham's sons by concubines, conveys that Abraham had at least two wives in addition to Sarah. Those who identify Keturah with Hagar have rejoined us to each of these proofs. In Genesis 25 verse 1 teaches that these marriages were in fulfillment of a divine command, the proponents of this view learn this from Isaiah 8 verse 5, again the Lord spoke to me, where the word appears in the context of divine revelation. Second, the wife's new name of Keturah does not necessarily teach that this was a different woman, rather, it was a name given to Hagar in recognition of her good qualities. Her marriage. In the Midrashic depiction, after Abraham divorces Hagar and sends her into the wilderness she sits by the well and cries to God, see my shame. Hagar's demand for justice was accepted by God, who revealed himself to Abraham after Sarah's death and commanded him to take back his divorcee, Hagar Keturah. A different story has Isaac initiating his father's marriage. When Isaac married Rebekah, he said to himself, I have taken a wife, while my father is without a spouse. What did he do? He went and brought him Keturah. This tradition is based on Genesis 24 verse 62. Isaac had just come back from the vicinity, he brought back with him. The meaning of the name, Keturah. The name Keturah lends itself to a number of rabbinic interpretations. She was perfumed, Mekuteret, with commandments and good deeds. The children of Keturah as the realization of God's blessing to Abraham. Genesis 26 lists the six children that Keturah bore to Abraham, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua, to which the Midrash applies the verse, and whatever he does prospers. These offspring express the fulfillment of the blessing given by God to Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 3, and all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you, for thirty families came from Abraham, the twelve chieftains from Ishmael, the sixteen descendants of Keturah, and, Genesis 25 verse 23, two nations are in your womb. The offspring of Keturah as a constant threat to Israel. In opposition to the view that the offspring of Keturah were the realization of the Lord's promise to Abraham, another approach presents them as perpetually menacing Israel. The rabbis championing this position emphasize that these offspring do not follow the spiritual way of Abraham, moreover, since they already received their inheritance from him, they are not entitled to make any further demands. The children of Keturah are depicted as waste that issued from Abraham, Sifre on Deuteronomy 31 verse 2. Zimran and Jokshan were so called because they would sing, Mezamrim, and beat, Mekishim, on a drum for idolatrous purposes, Rabbah 61 5. When God wished to give the Torah, he offered it to the children of Keturah and to the Ishmaelites, but they refused to accept it, since they could not abandon the robbery and theft on which their lives were based, 
Midrash to name on Deuteronomy 33 verse 2. The children of Keturah and of Ishmael did not receive Abraham's blessing. The Midrash stresses that this was an intentional decision on Abraham's part. He said to himself, If I bless Isaac now, I will also have to bless the children of Ishmael and of Keturah. But if I do not bless them, how will I be able to bless Isaac? Surely what he wants in his world will happen. And so it happened that after Abraham's death, God revealed himself to Isaac and blessed him, as his father had intended to do. Genesis 25 verse 6 relates that Abraham sent the sons of Keturah away from Isaac, eastward, to the land of the east. He told them, go as far eastward as you can, so you will not be burnt by the burning coal of Isaac Rabbah 61 verse 7. In another tradition, Abraham sends the sons of Keturah away with a writ of divorce, as a wife is sent away from her husband. This notion is based on Genesis 25 verse 6, but to Abraham's sons by concubines Abraham gave gifts while he was still living, and he sent them away from his son Isaac, and this expulsion is both in this world and in the world to come. Keturah's offspring never ceased to claim their father's inheritance. The Midrash tells of something involving the rabbis during the time of Alexander the Great. The offspring of Keturah and of Ishmael came before Alexander and argued against Israel, Erez Israel belongs to us and to you, for we also are the children of Abraham. Gebuha ben Pasisa came and said to the rabbis, Grant me permission, and I will go and plead against them before Alexander the Great. If they defeat me, then say, You have bested the commoner among us, and if I defeat them, tell them, the Torah of our teacher Moses has defeated you. They authorized him, and he went and disputed with the offspring of Keturah and of Ishmael. He asked, Whence do you bring a proof for your claim? They replied, From the Torah. Gebiha ben Pasisa retorted, I, too, will bring a proof from the Torah. It is said, in Genesis 25 verse 5 and 6, Abraham willed all that he owned to Isaac, but to Abraham's sons by concubines Abraham gave gifts. If a father gave his children bequests in his lifetime and sent them away from each other, has any one a claim against the other? The offspring of Keturah and of Ishmael immediately left behind their sown fields and their planted vineyards, and fled. That year was a sabbatical year and Israel enjoyed the fruits of the abandoned fields. The descendants of Keturah in the future. A late Midrash relates that Abraham built for Keturah's offspring a city surrounded by a high iron wall, and brought them inside. He raised the wall so high that sunlight would never enter, and he gave them precious stones and large pearls, which Israel would use in the days to come. In addition, in the days to come Abraham will be ashamed of Ishmael and the offspring of Keturah, as portrayed in Isaiah 24 verse 23, then the moon shall be ashamed. This story taken from Book of Torah and Rabbah. Thank you for watching this video. Like share and subscribe our channel Sermon TV. Comment your opinion here.